Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reporting ambient light data back to Home Assistant using a BH1750 and an ESP8266. Okay, uh, so here we have the parts that we're going to use for this project. Uh, this is the light sensor itself and you can see that this little chip here is the, the light sensor and then we've got some uh, resistors and capacitors and so on on this board as well. Uh, this board comes with some header pins. I am quite surprised at how small this board is. Um, I did pay $5.99 for this off Amazon.co.uk. You can definitely get these cheaper than that. Uh, I'm just a wee bit impatient and wanted this one uh, next day. The ESP8266, in this case on a D1 Mini, we've looked at in a previous video. Um, and we will be using the ESP Home uh, add-on in order to flash firmware to this and to integrate it into Home Assistant. Now, if you haven't looked at that before, or you don't know what that is, I'll leave a card up here um, about how, and we'll look at another video of how, how we install that. Uh, so our first step here is going to be to solder these um, pin headers onto the uh, BH1750 chip and then get it wired up and then we'll jump over to Home Assistant and look how we, we set things up in there. Uh, just before I get started with that, just a reminder, uh, please do subscribe to the channel. If you can, subscriptions are really helpful for me at the moment because I'm quite a new channel here on YouTube. So if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. Uh, after a, a couple of comments and, and requests as well, I have also opened a Patreon page as well as an Amazon wish list, which I'll leave links for down in the description. Okay, so here we have the module all wired together. Uh, we have ground to ground. Uh, VCC is going to the 3.3 uh, volt pin on the D1 Mini. And then we have pin SDA going to D1 and PSC1 going to D2. There's also an address pin on the uh, the light sensor, but we'll not be using that as part of this project. So now let's jump over to Home Assistant and look at how we're going to get this set up. Okay, so here's a quick look at the Amazon page for the product I bought, just so we can make sure you get the right one if you're going to follow along. And I will leave a link for this in the description. So we're gonna head on over to Home Assistant and the first thing we're going to do is head to our ESP Home add-on, which again, we did look at in another video. So if you haven't seen that and you don't know how to use ESP C Home, please go ahead and click on the card that should be showing up now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click on the web UI and hopefully we'll get the user interface, which we have. Um, we're going to add a sensor. And we're going to call this one office okay it only accepts um, lowercase uh, here office underscore light underscore sensor I'll do and um, we'll click continue now we have to pick the module that we want uh, we'll go on the D1 Mini, we're going to continue. It should remember, if you followed along in the last video, it should remember your Wi-Fi information here. So we'll go ahead and press continue again and submit. And there we go, we've got this office light sensor here. I'll just click up here to get rid of that. Now, as I said in the last video, you tend to have to restart Home Assistant to get rid of this error here. So we'll go ahead and restart Home Assistant. So we'll close this. Best practice when restarting, as always, is just to go to General and check our configuration. Configuration is valid. So we will go ahead and reboot Home Assistant. And when we're rebooted, I will start the recording again. Okay, here we are back with Home Assistant restarted. So we are going to head back over to our ESP Home add-on and dive into the web UI again. And with any luck this time, when we go to Office Light Center and edit, 
we get the configuration file now. Excellent. Okay. So our next step here is to install the uh, I squared C bus uh, components. So I squared C is a communication um, protocol that this light sensor uses. So what we're going to do is on the ESPC home web page that I will leave also leave a link for in the description. We are just going to copy this example and we're going to copy it into our file here but we're going to change some things here. Now, like I said, in the wiring portion of this video, this SDA pin is actually on uh, pin D1. And SC1 is on D2. We're also going to have, and sorry, that's it. That's it for the I squared C portion. On the ESP home page, there's also uh, some information about the light sensor that we're using. So we're also going to take this and we're going to paste that over into our configuration file here. Now we've got an interval of 60 seconds here. I'm actually going to change that to 20 seconds. I will leave it for 60 in the final um, in the final version of this. I'm changing it to 20 here so when I do my demonstration later I don't have to sit with my hand over the sensor for a, for a whole minute. Uh, once we've done that we're going to go ahead and click save and we can close this. The next step here is to compile. Now this is going to take quite a long time so I'm going to pause the video here and we'll come back once this sketch is compiled. Okay, now this uh, sketch has finished compiling, we'll go ahead and download the binary and we can see we have the file downloaded here. Uh, just for ease of use, I am going to go ahead and it's opened on my, my second screen here, but I'm just going to go ahead and move that file onto the desktop. Okay, that's done and that file is now over on a desktop. Um, so we can come out of that and we're going to open up our ESP Home Flash Utility. Again, we downloaded this in the last video, so if you're not sure about this, please go ahead and look at that. And um, we're going to remember to run this as administrator. Okay, and here we go, that's opened up. Um, we're just going to refresh the serial device list and hopefully we will get a COM port up. So this is our ESP8266 that I have plugged in via its USB port. And then we are going to browse for that file that we just downloaded. So we can see it's here. It's office light sensor.bin. So open that up and we can click flash ESP. Now this will take a few minutes to do its thing, so again I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back once it's finished. Okay, and here we go, we can see that um, it has finished flashing. Uh, we did get a, a flash complete here, and then we get all of this information uh, here uh, after it. Um, we can see down here I did get an error where communication has failed, um, but then it seems to have rectified that. So we'll go ahead and have a look. Uh, hopefully this isn't going to cause too much of an issue. So we'll just minimize that for now and we'll jump back over to Home Assistant. And you can see that we are now showing as this sensor is online. Uh, so that's looking good. So we'll head on over to the overview and we can see that we've got this bell icon showing up here yeah, now to say it's discovered a new device. Now this didn't happen for us uh, in our last video and I think that's because I'd already gone ahead and done this and then undone everything that I had done in preparation for the video to show you guys. Uh, whereas on this occasion I haven't prepared this yet. I have, this is the first time I'm doing this. Um, so we are getting that notification. Anyway, we can go ahead and click check it out and we can see here that we have this new ESP Home Office light sensor and it's giving us the option to configure it. So we are going to go ahead and do that. 
and we just click submit and then finish and then if we head back over to the overview page it's not there um, and I would have quite liked it to have been so what we're going to do is we're just going to check that it's working go by going over to statuses and we'll just find it in the table here and we will scroll down until we find here this is the the sensor here now we see when we're getting an unknown value so it might not be pulling any data through from the sensor but let's have a look let's ha add it to our overview here and see what it's telling us so we'll go to configure user interface and we're going to add an entity and we are going to in fact do you know what we're going to do we're not going to do that we are going to edit this one here because we already have an entity for our office we're just going to add this sensor into it so we're going to scroll down until we find our sensor which is that one there and save now you can see that this is coming up here as unknown so the first thing i'm going to do here is a troubleshooting step is I am going to restart the ESP chip and I'm also going to restart Home Assistant just because then we know that uh, the error isn't just in some configuration not quite taken hold. So let me go and restart everything and we'll come back. Okay guys, uh, here we are back um, and we can see we've got the light sensor up and running here. It turns out that I had the two data pins for the light sensor the wrong way around um, once I've put these the right way around and done a restart I'm now getting a value that does seem to be refreshing at least every 20 seconds if not quicker so let's have a look at how we can now incorporate this into a automation in order to do an automation correctly with this, we would have to let the sensor keep running for a while and, and get some data from it to see how, how light the room is um, and so on. But at the moment, you can see that we are getting a value over 400. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my finger on top of the sensor in order to block as much light out as possible. And I'm just going to give it uh, a little while to refresh and I'm just going to see what the value is and here we can see that the values dropped right down to 12.5 so let's see if we can use that in a automation in order to turn a lamp on when it gets dark in the room okay so we're gonna head over to configuration and then automation and in here we are going to click on the plus button down here in the bottom corner and we're going to give our new automation name. So I'm going to call this one Office Light Sensor. Now in here, our trigger is going to be a numerical state. And we're going to say if our numerical state gets below 100, now this m will change. Um, when you're living with the sensor and you're getting to know what the light levels in your room are like you might have to put this number higher or lower but we know that if I put my finger over the sensor it goes to about 12 which is definitely lower than 100 so for the purposes of demonstration we're going to go with 100 and then we're going to say so if the numerical value of the sensor is below 100 we want to call a service and the service we want to call is light turn on um, and then the best way to get the service data as I've said before is to open another tab with home assistant in and go to the little remote button here and go to light turn on find the entity you want in this case we're going to use lamp 2 and then just copy and paste that information over to here. Go ahead and click save. Head back to our overview and we can see we've got this new automation here. So let's give it a test and see if it works. 
Okay, so it was kind of hard to get everything that I needed to get in shot here, so please bear with me. But here we have a, a lamp that has a, a smart bulb, or bulb 2, that was in our configuration in it. And here we have our ESP and our light sensor here. So what should happen now with this automation is if I put my finger over this light sensor, now it can take up to 20 seconds, remember, because that was our refresh rate. Now in the real world with your lights, that doesn't really matter. But there we can see, because the light sensor has read a value below 100, the light has automatically turned on. Now the light won't turn itself off now when it goes above 100, that would be another automation, but it would just kind of be the reverse of what we've done here. So another automation, but instead of saying below 100, you would say above 100, and the light would then turn itself back off when the room got bright again. Uh, and that's that's it for this video. So of course we could design and 3D print a nice enclosure for this, which I might go ahead and do. Um, but for now, I think I'm gonna leave this where it is. Uh, so as always, if you have liked the video, please do go ahead and subscribe. Subscriptions mean so much. So if you can do it, please, please do so. Um, and I will leave some links in the description to where you can find uh, these products as well as links to my Patreon and my Amazon wishlist. Uh, thank you very much for watching.